Ambassador Rice, when you heard the news about John Bolton's departure, were you surprised at all, given the, the turnover and the turmoil in the White House? I was surprised by the timing of it because uh, it came with little notice, but I wasn't surprised that we might come to this point because it seemed quite clear that in many respects, uh, John Bolton and his policy uh, interests and his policy positions deviated quite dramatically from President Trump's. And uh, there have been a number of stories recently about how Bolton had uh, been excluded or attempted to have been excluded from very important meetings uh, where any national security advisor would rightly be present. So uh, the fact that the, the rift came to the fore and then resulted in his departure itself was not such a surprise. I think the timing was. And recall, we're not only just days after the Afghan debacle, but we're on the eve now of the United Nations General Assembly, uh, where foreign policy will again come to the fore. So it's an awkward time to have a, a, a no national security advisor or a brand new national security advisor. As you know, CNN's reporting is that the, the scheduled and canceled, um, I guess, I don't know if a summit or meeting with the Taliban at Camp David was the final straw between the president and Bolton, combined with Bolton reportedly criticizing the whole thing to journalists in the past few days. If, I mean, do you agree with Bolton on the substance of opposing that, that meeting, or what do you make of the idea of the meeting um, because it also gets to the point you made earlier, which is it shouldn't be surprising given that Bolton's you know, well-known positions from being on Fox News, if nothing else, should have been known to the president before he was hired or would have been known to the president before he was hired. Well, Anderson, you know, should have been known absolutely. Whether they were known or whether the president cared at the time or only cared when it seemed to thwart his agenda is hard to judge. Um, but clearly, John Bolton had some very strong views uh, on a number of issues, most of which I disagree with him on. For example, Venezuela, uh, his approach to Iran. But on Afghanistan, I think uh, he had a very valid point. It was an appalling uh, judgment to invite the Taliban responsible for the deaths of thousands of Americans uh, to Camp David when they hadn't agreed to end the conflict with the Afghan government, much less talk to the Afghan government. So w what happens now? I mean, the president's obviously fine with having people fill jobs in an acting capacity. Uh, he's fine not having a press secretary doing, uh, you know, daily briefings with a press corps. He's happy just kind of handling it himself on the way to and from a helicopter. Um, it seems like he's happy not necessarily having a lot of close advisors. He seems to feel he can negotiate with Kim Jong-un on his own and Vladimir Putin on his own. So what what happens next? I mean, ha what, how does the next national this security is... advisor do his or her job? <laughs> These are two different things. So the, the broader problem we have uh, is that the national security process has completely broken down. John Bolton did not convene the national security principles, the cabinet level officials uh, who are supposed to weigh in and collectively make recommendations to the president on anything like a regular basis. He uh, arrogated so much authority to himself to the exclusion of his counterparts. Um, and uh, decisions were not worked through with the rigor and the care that they normally are and that they need to be. Add to that that we have a president who could care less, it seems, about history, about analysis, about the, the rigor of uh, going through various options and weighing their uh, prospective uh, risks and benefits. He's making policy on the fly, often changing his mind in midstream, it's an extremely dangerous situation. So you're saying and the system President has Trump really broken down. It's proving. It has broken down. Um, and what President Trump is proving is that even if we had a system that was performing as it should, he could care less and he would throw the results out the window. So we've got two problems. Mm. We've got a dysfunctional national security process and a president who himself, by virtue of the way he governs uh, and, and plays his role as commander in chief, is putting our interests at grave risk in many different contexts. Just lastly, uh, I want to get your reaction to today's new CNN reporting that, uh, that President Trump has privately and repeatedly expressed opposition to the use of foreign intelligence 
from covert sources overseas, according to, to multiple senior officials who served under the president. He reportedly fears those, those assets, those covert assets will damage his relationships with foreign leaders, and essentially he doesn't trust uh, the intelligence. I mean, that's, it is, uh, assuming that is true, that is a, seems to be a remarkable breach from, uh, I mean, that's what, this, co- you know, that's what overseas operatives for the CIA do. It's crazy. Do. I mean, Anderson, call, call it what it is. It's crazy, <laughs> yes. okay? The, our adversaries are using espionage, including human intelligence assets against us every day. For the United States to unilaterally disarm and say well, we're going to renounce one of the most useful forms of intelligence collection against our most uh, committed adversaries is foolish, to put it mildly. And so, you know, for the president to put his own self-interest, it seems, above the national interest of the United States, above the national security of the United States, which in so many instances, this just being the latest, seems to be his pattern, is extraordinarily dangerous and detrimental uh, to our security, to our standing in the world, and to our ability to protect ourselves, which is what intelligence is about. Intelligence is about protecting the American people from our adversaries. Ambassador Rice, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Anderson.